Commercial Property Executive, and I'm sitting down with renowned economist Mark Zandi, Chief Economist at, at Moody's Analytics, to talk about commercial real estate in the national economy. Thanks for joining me, Mark. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Could you summarize your greatest concerns regarding the nation's economic performance? Well, let me first say I think the economy is performing well, and uh, near-term prospects uh, you know, through the end of the decade are pretty good. There are threats and risks. Uh, the thing that worries me the most uh, is there's a big disconnect between uh, what the Federal Reserve thinks it's going to do with interest rates and what markets think the Federal Reserve is going to do. Somebody's wrong. Uh, the Fed is right. Markets have to adjust. And if they have to adjust their expectations, we'll get a big repricing in asset markets, uh, stock prices, commercial real estate values, um, uh, credit spreads in the bond market, currency, commodity prices. So. You know, in my optimism, I think that adjustment will be relatively graceful, uh, more volatility, but graceful, uh, but obviously a lot of risk around that it could be more, the repricing could be more violent than I'm expecting and the damage to the economy more severe. To date, it, the overall interest rate has remained relatively low. Do you expect that to remain the same for the foreseeable future? Do you No, I expect rates to rise. Change? Rates will rise. Significantly or just... Short-term uh, short rates will rise quite a bit. I mean, the federal funds rate target is just over one. It should be closer to three in the long run. Uh, you know, it'll take a couple of years, I think, to get there, but uh, from one to three. Long-term rates uh, won't rise as much because uh, Treasury bonds and other long-term securities are determined in a global marketplace, and you still have other central banks like the European Central Bank, the Bank of Japan, buying long-term bonds. So that'll keep... Uh, a lid on the increase in long-term rates. So I think the yield curve, the shape between, uh, the difference between long-term interest rates and short-term rates will get more narrow going forward. But I think okay. rates are rising. They're going higher. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you see the commercial and multifamily real estate industry playing into the nation's economic performance? Do you see the uh, CRE investment impacting the overall national economy? Uh, it's adding to growth. You know, in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty small in the macro economy. Um, I mean, to give you a sense of it, total uh, investment in what you might consider commercial real estate is probably 2-3% of GDP. So mm -hmm. it's hard to move the dial. Um, mm -hmm. It can create problems, though, uh, if there's a lot of uh, uh, lending, credit growth in the commercial real estate market in times past that has been the fodder for recessions. I mean, right. if you think back into the 80s, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, the SNL crisis, the savings and loan crisis, right. that caused the early 1990s recession. That was CRE induced. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think that's going to be the case this go around uh, for lots of reasons if we, if we talk about them. But um, you know, it, it can do some damage to the economy. But in, in, you know, broadly speaking, it's a pretty small part of the pie, right. and it's it's adding. You know, it's a, a small plus to growth. Mm -hmm. Drilling down a bit more, uh, what's the job market's outlook for the next 12 to 18 months and what does that tell us about the demand for office space? Good. Uh, we're creating lots of jobs, two, mm -hmm. two and a half million every year. Uh, that's double the rate of the labor force, the growth in the labor force. Uh, when you're creating that many jobs, it's all, you're creating all kinds of jobs. You know, right. low paying, leisure hospitality jobs, middle paying, construction manufacturing, high paying professional services. Um, you know, really the only there's only a couple uh, industries that are struggling a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Brick and mortar retailers, obviously, because the online guys are killing them, and right. uh, uh, print media for the same reason, online. Mm -hmm. Energy was struggling a little bit, although it's starting to get its uh, footing back because prices have stabilized. But we're creating lots of jobs, and so this uh, creating so many jobs that unemployment, which is now very low, just over four percent, is falling fast. And so a year from now. If everything sticks roughly to script, it'll be sub four, and, and you know that rarely happens, and that goes back to why interest rates are going to rise. Mm -hmm. and, and I know you've written also about issues with immigration limitations and how that can play into um, big problem, right? Yeah. Um, you know, that's going to be a binding constraint on growth. I mean, mm -hmm. the labor force. I mean, boomers, folks my age, are retiring on mass. The millennials are already in. So right. if we don't, uh, if we curtail immigration, that means our labor force. Uh, uh, will grow much more slowly. It's already slowing. Uh, uh, if we have the same amount of immigrants going forward as we've had in the recent past, labor force growth will pretty much come to a standstill five, ten years from now. If we restrict immigration, it will actually decline. And that means, you know, you need people to be employed. So if you can't, if you don't have people, you're right. not going to have jobs. If you don't have jobs, obviously that hurts things like uh, office space. Mm -hmm. 
Do you see boomers uh, retiring later? There was talk of that for a while. Yeah, yeah. The participation rates of older workers, boomers, uh, are, are rising mm -hmm. uh, for lots of reasons. Some people need to work longer. They're not prepared financially for retirement. Some people want to work longer. I, they'll have to drag me out, you know, a <laughs> stake in my heart. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I don't know what I'm going to do if I'm not working. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, but even with that, uh, there just aren't going to be enough people. Um, uh, the growth in labor force is going to slow. Mm -hmm. What's the challenge for um, office real estate owners is that meanwhile the space per person is shrinking. Yeah. You've got more workers working in different situations, not in the traditional office space. For sure. So yeah. you couple that with, with the limitation on labor. Yeah. I don't know where that leaves uh, office buildings. Well, absorption growth will be weaker, right? Mm -hmm. All else being equal. I mean, you're going to have fewer people entering the workforce uh, being employed. And as you say, the uh, square foot you need per employee is continuing to decline. I mean, I barely use my, I have two offices, you know, one here in New York, one in Philly where I live. Mm -hmm. I barely use them, right? I mean, yeah. if I have any, if I, you know, if I stand and write an article or build models or whatever I do, I'd much rather do it on my back deck than in my office. And right. there's absolutely no reason why I need to be in my office, right? So. Uh, you know, that's going to be an issue for sure going yeah. forward. Yeah, let just lots less absorption. The need for office space will be much less going forward. Mm -hmm. On the retail, what do you think the commercial real estate industry should know about trends in consumer spending and retailer strategy that will influence strategies for brick and mortar retail? In the well, years? I think brick and mortar retail has to change, become something else, right? Not mm -hmm. just selling a product. Uh, it's, no, it's no longer going to be just a store, right? It's got to be something more than that. Some form of entertainment, uh, an attraction, you know, some reason to go there. Because, you know, for most things, I think people are going to buy online, increasingly so. Yeah. Um, that's just, you know, inevitable. It's just so much more convenient, cheaper, you know, and now you, you order online, you get it delivered immediately. So, I mean, why wouldn't I do that exactly? So. Mm -hmm. You know, the uh, brick and mortar guys have some, you know, they, but as you say, they have been through big technological changes in the past and they've adjusted, adapted, figured it out. I, I suspect that will be the case. You know, one, one thing to recognize about the U.S. economy is it's very flexible. You know, people figure it out. Um, you know, when money's involved, <laughs> they figure it right. out. Uh, you know, lots of good examples, recent examples of that. I, I think the retailers will figure it out, but, uh, but being, you know, just a place where someone goes in and buys something is, I think those days are over. You know? It's kind of like the office space. You can yeah. work anywhere, yeah. you can shop anywhere too. Right. And the online experience gets just better and better every, you know, every year, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, everything you buy is just, and pretty soon you're just going to be able, you're going to be able to design it, right? And <laughs> then not too long after that, you're going to be able to manufacture it, you know, the 3D manufacturing. Right. So. You know, retailers are going to, it's going to be constant flux and change. And that's why, you, you know, that's one sector of the economy where you always have lots of churn, right? As you said, mm -hmm. lots of, you know, we saw, I think, three or 400 retail bankruptcies over the past year. So right. very, that's a little elevated by historical standards. You know, obviously online is coming on pretty fast here, hard to adjust to, but, you know, it's typical. That's a part of the economy that is in constant, as economists say, creative destruction. Mm -hmm. Shifting to the metro level outlook. Um, are you coming across any metro areas that you might consider sleepers, relatively unsung cities that might not yet be attracting much attention, um, but you see them in a strong position to move up the charts quickly and surprise? Yeah, uh, we actually do a lot of work in this area around the Amazon, you know, HQ2 yeah. uh, location. So we did a lot of work um, looking at the areas with over a million in population and, you know, they be a good place for Amazon to uh, locate its headquarters. Some interesting, um, you know, results. Um, mm -hmm. um, you know, my hometown is Philadelphia. Philadelphia uh, rates pretty high. Not because it rates high on any one criteria, but that it doesn't rate low on any of them. You know, good transportation mm -hmm. network, uh, pretty cheap relative to New York and Washington, living costs, uh, plus doing business. Um, you know, a pretty educated population. Uh, you know, a lot going for it. Uh, some some downsides, but. 
as an example, Pittsburgh, Rochester, all, all rank Austin, high. Austin, I think you had high. Um, I, I wouldn't consider that a sleeper. That, oh, that's not yeah, a sleeper. You're right. Doing, yeah, it's been pretty well for quite some time. I was thinking about your yeah. ads on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was number one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Atlanta was actually a number two, but that's, no, that's not that's a sleeper, not a sleeper either. either. I, yeah. I wouldn't consider a sleeper. Uh, but some of the Northeast, you know, cities that kind of been dormant for a while, you know, trying to just restructure. They were kind of the place to be back in the after World War II, in, in, you know, in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And then, when mm -hmm. manufacturing started to decline, they got nailed. And it's been you know decades since they've been kind of trying to get it together. I think just trying to get it together. Uh, so if I were looking for a place that, as you say, is a sleeper, it'd be some of these northeastern markets with about a, you know, at least a million in population, because that's kind of a critical size. Mm -hmm. Then you get you know big. You know, you've got a deep labor pool, and you can start attracting some bigger size multinational businesses. So, yeah, uh, you know, I think that might be the sleeper. Any final thoughts for our viewers? No, I, you know, I, I think these are pretty good times. Uh, I think uh, let the good times roll, right? I, at least for the next couple, three years. I uh, kind of buckle in after that. Uh, the, you know, the this is uh, the third longest economic expansion in history, and you know, recessions, uh, uh, expansions don't uh, die of old age. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, when the economy uh, moves past full employment, and we're there, the clock starts ticking on the expansion. So uh, you know, I don't think the next there'll be a problem in the next couple of years. But as you look into the early part of the next decade, uh, you know, I think that, that's uh, the next time we we'll, we'll need to buckle in. Okay. Well, I guess we'll, as you said, keep rolling now, yeah. and uh, yeah. but but watch out don't for the future too. too. Yeah, right? don't, borrow, don't take too much risk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks so much, My Mark. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Very kind of you. Thank you.